Guys, I'm really thrilled to welcome back to the podcast uh, my friend Julie Kelly, investigative journalist, also featured in the new film Police State. She's been covering uh, January 6th and the court hearings and all the stuff around January 6th with a rigor and a clarity that I think is unmatched. Um, Julie, welcome to the podcast. Um, hey, I hear that you went with some friends to see the movie last night in suburban Chicago. So uh, yes. tell us about that. It was great, uh, Dinesh. And first, I just want to thank you and Debbie. I feel so honored to be part of this important project. So I'm so grateful yeah. for you uh, including me in it. So we had a little pre-party and we were at the theater in Yorktown Mall, which is uh, in DuPage County. It's county just west of Chicago. Uh, it was where I was raised and cut my political teeth, actually worked for some uh, elected officials there. Used to be a solidly red county and uh, just elected their first Democrat chairman of the board. So it has one of those more upscale suburban areas that we've seen trend, unfortunately, towards the Democrats. Anyway, uh, two theaters there to uh, the 630 show was sold out. Our show was seven o'clock. It was also sold out. Um, just really a lot of patriotic uh, feeling in the theater. People were shocked. They were heartbroken. They were outraged at what they were seeing. Uh, at the end, uh, most everyone sang the national anthem because, of course, that's how you close with the political prisoners. Some people were standing. So uh, it was very well received. I think this film is so important and will be, of course, an eye opener to millions of Americans who might have heard a little bit about what the FBI and DOJ are up to. Uh, but we'll see, uh, you know, as you've presented it. We'll see exactly what is happening, the reality of the situation and the dangerous times that we live in right now. You know, Julia, I think that I, I've tried to remember my first impressions when I came to America. This is a whole generation ago when I was a teenager. But I think one of the defining qualities of America is a certain type of aw shucks, you know, innocence. Even Reagan had a little bit of that with him, the cock of the head, the oh gee, you know. So I think it is difficult for Americans who do not have a direct experience of the police state. Now, sure, if you hear the whir of helicopters over your house and they come through your door, it's a rude awakening and then you begin to see the world a little differently. But if it hasn't happened to you, there's a tendency to believe that it won't. It can't happen here. This is America after all. People are looking for sort of the Stalin overcoat, the Hitler mustache. Does that make it more difficult? I mean, even for you as a journalist to penetrate through to people and say, no, something very different is happening. This is not the America we grew up in. I think it is. And Dinesh, I think our challenge on the right is that we are the party of law and order. We are the party of the rule of law. We are the party of <laughs> equal justice. And um, so I think it's hard to disabuse people on the right that there are law enforcement agencies in this country who are actively working against you, uh, that there are bad cops, that there are bad prosecutors, that there are bad judges. Uh, the legal and judicial system that we were raised believing in is totally corrupted. And we could talk a little bit about what I see regularly at the D.C. federal courthouse. And that is the crux of what's happening uh, in our nation's capital. Uh, these ongoing jury trials, the prosecution of Donald Trump in both Washington, D.C. and Southern District of Florida on federal criminal charges. And as you know, Donald Trump always said, they're not coming after me. They're coming after you. Well, here is the situation. So I do think it's a little more challenging to convince our fellow travelers on the right that this is actually happening. Now, the flip side, of course, Dinesh, is we see the same party that bent the knee to George Floyd uh, defund the police movement, who for decades distrusted the FBI. Now, all of a sudden, they're the FBI's biggest cheerleader. So we have this really weird polar opposite now happening uh, in both political parties. Uh, but of course, the left embraces this because they believe that they will be protected from this police state and only target the right. But Dinesh, you know, as a um, expert of history, that is not what happens. And eventually this police state comes for its own. 
Yeah, it seems, Julie, that with regard to the left, the people who are helping to build the police state enjoy um, a temporary immunity to it. And in fact, they know about that, right? When Jamal Bowman pulled the fire extinguisher, I'm sure it didn't cross his mind for one second that he would be arrested, he would be charged, he would be confined. He knew to that degree he was above the law, didn't he? He absolutely did. And he has not, there's been no criminal referral to the Department, <laughs> Department of Justice or Matthew Graves, the U.S. Attorney for the District of Columbia, who is in the process of prosecuting 1,100 Americans and counting for a four-hour protest that happened almost three years ago. Furthermore, Dinesh, think of what happened last week in the Cannon House office building, hundreds of pro-Hamas, I called it the Hamas erection, in the Cannon office building, Capitol Police made an announcement, you are not to demonstrate in a in a house office building, but there they were. They were assaulting police officers. You saw the confrontation with those two lunatics who went after Marjorie Taylor Greene. They, to my knowledge, are not have not been arrested. I've asked Capitol Police phone call and email for an update on arrests, particularly those two individuals who tried to physically attack Marjorie Taylor Greene. No response. Also, you had three demonstrators who interrupted an official proceeding, and that was the Senate Foreign Relations hearing that was also happening that day. Now, they weren't hauled off to a D.C. gulag. They weren't charged with a felony like obstruction of an official proceeding, punishable by up to 20 years in prison. That felony is only reserved for the 300 plus Americans who protested on January 6th, not for those people who got far closer to lawmakers than anyone on January 6th. So you are absolutely correct, whether it's Representative Jamal Bowman, whether it's hundreds of uh, pro-Hamas uh, anti-Semites in the House uh, office, Cannon office building or Senate, of course they know that they will be protected and they have. That entire demonstration last week has been completely dropped, not just apparently by DOJ and Capitol Police, but of course by the media as well. We'll be right back with Julie Kelly. Last month, the G20 announced that it welcomed discussion of the effects of implementing central bank digital currencies in their countries. These digital currencies could allow the government to track every purchase you make. They could even allow officials to prohibit you from purchasing certain products or freeze or even seize part or all of your money. In essence, the government controls your finances. Not good. Concerned Americans like me are diversifying our assets into physical gold with the help of Birch Gold Group. If you want a physical asset held in a tax-sheltered retirement account, you should call Birch Gold. Debbie and I are customers. We buy our gold through Birch Gold. But find out for yourself. Text Dinesh to 989898. They'll send you a free information kit on gold. Here's the easiest way to become a Birch Gold customer. If you have an IRA or a 401k from a previous employer, Birch Gold can help you convert it into an IRA in gold and you don't pay a penny out of pocket. Text Dinesh to 989898, claim your free information kit on gold, then call Birch Gold because if digital currency becomes a reality, it'll be nice to have some gold to fall back on.